What's up, everyone? Welcome back. It's Cork Stats, powered by the Mayo Media Net here on YouTube and presented by Jock Market, the daily fantasy app where we actually make money. We were at it again. Download the app for free. Use the code MMN. They're going to match the first 100 bucks for free. And if it's free, it's for me. And that 100 bucks is more than enough to do damage. If you rolled with us yesterday, you know exactly what we mean. We're not just throwing names at you. We're telling you the names and the prices and exactly how to deploy it as we go through the three pillars of profit here on Cork's stats, all the nuance and context that seriously you could stomach. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the audio-only pod. And if I deserve it in a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to press that cartoon thumb button. This show really should be excellent because it's the second time I'm doing it. I've been sick as a dog and I botched the sound got all the way to the end, and you couldn't hear me. And I know sometimes it's a bit too much of me, but you got to hear a little bit of it as we get through all the info and the three pillars of profit. Oh, my goodness, man. Seriously. Life is so much fun sometimes, man. And we can just kind of bear with it and roll with the punches. I always love to put positive out, positive in, positive out. All right, enough I had Tony Robbins stuff. Enough of that. Let's do more of this. The three pillars of profits begin every day with the stack attack. It's daily DFS jock market. And we're showing you kind of how to use these things, right? I run the hitter model. It pops up and then it's up to us. The highest IQ group in the nation right now doing the fastest show in MLB anywhere all the nuance like I said man being able to discern when it's time to play a hitter in DFS when it's time to play a total base prop when it's time to play a hitter in jock market sometimes it's universal sometimes it's not but let's get into the where and the who and what why and how we're starting with those fighting fills we want the right Handed hitters on Philly against my boy Ian Anderson. It's been a rough go for him. 4-6 ERA, 1-5 whip, 750. OPS not terrible, but let's dive on in and see what we're exactly we're going to be going after. The K rate too low at 20. That walk rate really elevated above 11% because he's falling behind 52% first strike rate. Extremely low. Pairing that once he now has to come in with a 43% hard hit rate via stat cast when you start to get in trouble. It's been... In particular, trouble spotting the fastball to righties, right? So there's sometimes people hear splits and they automatically think automatic. That's not always the case, in particular with new balls, the humidors, and the movement profiles changing. We've heard pitchers complain about it. So sometimes it's just a pitcher trying to spot a ball. He's not able to do it. Anderson really struggling against righties. Year to date, right handed hitters have a 291 batting average, 840 OPS. You can't do that against the majority of hitters. In particular, the fastball, like I mentioned, has a nearly 500 expected slug and only a 14 percent whiff rate allowing two home runs and seven extra base hits year to date so we want to be looking for my boy Reese Hoskins on fire as of late last 75 plate appearances against righties a 313 batting average 240 ISO 940 OPS and four Ram Alama Ding Dogs in that span though in particular 8% blast 67% hard hit rate against right-handed fastball so that's exactly what we're going to be looking for the other two hitters that came up on the model have not been hitting as of late, so here comes some of that application. It's Castellanos and Veerling. Now, the reason they rank up is because they're very good at hitting righty fastballs. They haven't been great. So let's look at Castellanos first against fastballs from righties year to date. 18% barrel, 64% hard hit rate. So a guy like Castellanos is probably going to be priced up in DFS. Not interested. A guy like Castellanos is probably going to have good odds for the total base prop. That one's going to be on the fence. Let's say it's plus 120. It's yes. If it's minus 105, the answer is no. When you get to jock market, now it's purely price dependent. And in an app like jock market, that is how you make money. Kirilov is a perfect example. Really great hitters that get forgotten fall to the bottom of the price list. And remember, in jock market, if a player is cheap, there's inherent leverage. So when a player is cheap in jock in DFS, let's say, the entire world jumps on the free square. In jock market, if a player is cheap, it's because there is no demand. So it opens up the pathway for those big profits like we saw. So a guy like Castellanos, if he's at $475, $5 even or less, it's like smash. If he goes to $550, maybe we're going to just have a share or two. 
And if he goes above that, you say forget about it. Regardless of the hit a bottle, you let it go because in jock market, a player can hit a home run and not profit if they're too expensive. Where in DFS, I think if you get a home run, you win no matter what. In total base props, if you get a home run, you win no matter what. So there's a bit of the calculus. The last player we'll be looking at is Matt Veerling. Yes, the playing time is spotty. So here's another type of that application. DFS Veerling is a gem because he's going to be really cheap and all you need is an extra base hit. Total base props, he's going to be hitting ninth most likely. He's not going to have the plate appearances that you need, so you wouldn't do that regardless of the price. Now, I wouldn't say regardless of the price, but they pretty much max out at plus 145. And something like Jock Market Veeling could be a gem because it'd probably be cheap, and we could get him at $454 or below where we're going to go to smash it. So there's a little bit of the application again. Like I said, this context is just pouring out of our ears, but that's why win or lose, people are gravitating to the show and really you see the light bulbs not just going on, but exploding the brush fires in the minds of women and men with the new understanding that we have of these games and how to make money in risk ventures. All right. Let's get into the second stack. It's the Tampa Bay Rays. We're looking at Isak Paredes. Love that it's not Isaac. It is Isak. I do care about pronunciation. And Harold Ramirez going up against Yusei Kikuchi. He's been really bad this year. 508 ERA, 1 6 whip, 870 OPS. All those attack metrics firmly in place. The walk rate over 13. The first strike rate down around 51. One of those metrics, of course, we go to look for. Because if a pitcher falls behind, we know he's going to have to come in. His chase rate's also extremely low. We mentioned this yesterday on the show. 29% O swing is more than 10% below average, where we start to look for it. And then the contact profile is terrible. How about some bad math? 40 fly ball, 50 hard hit, and 17 barrel equals what? You there, waving your hand in the back row. Yes, more than 400 X Woba and two home runs per nine year to date, pair it with a better than 5 ERA at home, and I think Kikuchi's in trouble today. It's in particular with righties. He's allowed a 407 Woba, 945 OPS, and 11 of 13 home runs to righties year to date. In particular, the problems with the fastball, plus 700 X-Log, a 27% barrel allowed, and 5 home runs to righties. This is where we feast, man. Isak Paredes, last 25 Played appearance against lefties. He feasts on those bad boys. Remember, he's not a nobody. He had some shine as a prospect with the Tigers. The Rays also very good at kind of maximizing, optimizing those discarded post-type guys. Plus 1,100 OPS and four home runs did all that damage against the Yankees. But it's a 14% blast rate and against fit against fastballs. From lefties here today, 14% blast rate, really excellent. Remember, blast being the ideal subset of barrels. And then if we could zoom in just a bit more, in Toronto, the Rogers Center is top three in park factor for home runs to righties. The ball really flying there. And I know generally we use park factor over three years, but with the new ball and the inception of the humidors, I think the old park factor means a lot less. We've seen Philadelphia kind of regress. We've seen Toronto and Washington kind of move forward. We've seen Cincinnati hit hyperdrive and go ludicrous speed. They may actually hit plaid. So we got Isak Paredes. Let's go over to Harold Ramirez. He's killed lefties all year. 66 plate appearances year to date. A 390 batting average, 946 OPS. The ISO is pretty low at 105. So there's one of those triggers for maybe why total bases might not be the bet for Harold Ramirez, in particular if he's batting fifth or later. How the mirror is perfect for DFS, perfect for jock market. All systems go. I did have a third name there. We also want to be looking again as we do the things that we do. The electron microscope is out. We never stay the same. I intend to get better at my craft every single day until this is the best show with the best host and the best handicapping with the very sharpest audience in the nation. All right, so let's look at a Rosarena. Remember, when we notice the problem being the fastball, we might look for a Rosarena to get up off the mat. This is where he does the things he does against left-handed fastballs year-to-date, a 16% barrel, 11% blast, 43% hard hit rate, 95 miles an hour. So Rosarena on the outside there. Again, I wouldn't chase the total base props. I really want players that are swinging the ball well, at the time, swinging the bat well at the time, I should say. I was trying not to use the hot word, and I stepped on a rake right there. But So we want to be 
getting on Rose Arena. DFS is going to be price dependent. I didn't check the price. I would also check ownership reports. He's been very cold and people tend to get away from those guys. So Rose Arena could be viable in DFS. Jock Market, I think it's going to be all systems go. He'll probably be at that $5 mark where we want to be. Last stack, it's Seattle righties against Adrian Martinez. He had his debut for the A's. He went out, gave five and a third, only gave up zero runs. But we're not buying what he's selling. I was tracking him through the minors, 64 innings pitched, 5-6-3 ERA, 1-4 whip, nearly two home runs per nine in the minors. I think he's going to be in trouble. Remember, he faced Detroit. And I know Detroit's been getting up off the mat, but they're not a good offense. Seattle right now really looking good. J-Rod looking awesome. Got us across the finish line yesterday, and I think he's going to keep it up today. We're looking at J-Rod and Winker, both of them last 55 plate appearances against righties or better, have a plus 900 OPS, the plus 230 ISO, and a plus 13 bow rate, all the things that we're looking for. So give me the Phillies righties, Rays righties, and Seattle righties in our stack attack. Yeah, baby. All right, let's get up into the fantasy thing. Give me one, oh, sorry about that. Give me one second, please. All right, so I think that, Right there was the cough effect I was looking for, kind of a fade where you don't get the mute and you don't have to hear me gargling and spilling coffee and trying not to blow mucus all over myself, which is, listen, man, but I'll tell you the truth, this is the truth. All right, Fantasy Thursdays is where we make our money, right? We sharpen the axe to chop down the tree on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Thursday is when we start to deploy the work because most of us have waivers run tonight. You have three players at every position the assumption for the video people or the audio only listeners, I'm going to walk you through it, but I would suggest you hop over to Twitter or over to YouTube and screenshot that bad boy, which sounds like a perfect time. While you're over at YouTube, please just stop what you're doing now. Cartoon like button. Cartoon thumb. Me, cartoon thumb. You, finger, press, thumb button. Me, like. You, me, like. Like, I mean, that's how I feel the rating systems are. Like, how many cartoon thumbs are you worth? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's just absolutely insane. But anyway, press the like button if you're digging what we're doing because nothing is guaranteed in this world. We don't want this show to get lost. All right, let's start behind the dish. As always, Adley Rushman really coming alive. Now he's 10-team viable for sure, probably owned everywhere else. Jonah Heim is now 12-team viable. And Austin Nola is probably my 15-team ad. Remember, the bottom player on the list here. Most of you are going to hold your nose and probably roll your eyes and scoff at, which I understand. But I think the lesson is, and I've had a few people reach out to me interested in taking the next step, you know, playing NFBC, playing 15-team leagues, you know, trying to get a bit more complicated. Um, Which is great, which I fully encourage. And they've even lowered the price point, you know, so you can get into a very highly competitive 15-team main event qualifier for $125, which... You know, for as far as high stakes go, it's the entry point. So, to give you an idea, if you're interested in guys like Austin Nolo, where we're going with first base, then, you know, let me know. And this is the kind of stuff you're going to have to do to be sharp at NFBC. Always kind of mining, always turning over that bit of soil. Let's get over to first base. Alex Kirilov, he is healthy. He looks phenomenal. I kind of regret not being on him this year. I was worried about the wrist injury and how it would translate to power. He's been phenomenal. He looks like one of the best hitters in the game right now. He's going to be excellent. Trade for him. Buy high, Alex Kirilov. Next up, my dude, Vinny Pasquantino, Italian breakfast in the house. Came right up, hasn't produced yet, but he already has a couple of triple-digit exit velocities. He's going to be just fine playing every day. Now the player he supplanted, Carlos Santana, got moved over to Seattle, and he looks great. Now, I don't necessarily think this is going to stick where he's a league winner, but if you're watching the show yesterday, he's lighting up the XStat leaderboards. We know he's a quality hitter. And that ballpark could actually be good for him because I don't think we're going to get a ton of power, but he does spray the ball. There's a lot of real estate out there. So Carlos Santana, if you're desperate in 15-team leagues, could be viable at the corner. Over to second base, we go. Uh, e. Ruiz, I really don't want to butcher Estrudy Ruiz. I am so sorry to this young man, but the superstar prospect for San Diego has to be added in all formats. He is lighting up. Triple A, after he lit up double A, he must have 50 steals already. So before he gets the call, right, once the call is named, it's first waiver priority, it's 
300 fab dollars. you got to get on that first if you're in a league where maybe he's not thought of yet. Get with E. Ruiz on San Diego. Then to Nico Horner, who is now, I believe, 12-team viable as an MI, second base or shortstop. When he's on the field and swinging, he's really good. He kind of got a bad reputation coming in that there was no power in the bat, and that has not been the case. Then to Donovan Solano on Cincinnati. When we talk about desperate in 15-team leagues, there's very little in terms of at-bats and then productive at-bats. Solano going to be playing half his games in Cincinnati. We know he can hit. Over to shortstop, Ahmed Rosario. Yes, I'm so glad he's turned the quarter. He looks awesome. He is viable in every format. If you added him when he was discarded, you're thanking me right now. Nico Horner is next, who I mentioned. He covers, and another reason why I like him, that he covers both of the infield spots. You can kind of deploy him either place, also very tough. Right now, even though offense has ticked up, very tough sledding for middle infields because we've had some injuries. Then last up, I was desperate on this one. It's probably Luis Rengifo on the Angels. He's playing every day. He's hitting for average. I think he even stole a bag. Not much going on. Like Tyler Walls is playing every day, but there's not much there. Josh Harrison is getting to play every day again, but not much there. He stole a bag also, but that's what you choose in between. I'd say give me Rengifo. He does have the prospect pedigree and some shine let's get over to third base where it is pure desperation evan longoria isak Paredes, and heimer jamer candelario i think i went zero for three right there longo is going to play every day for the giants we know he hits the ball hard and until he gets hurt you want to run him out there Paredes, we mentioned is probably more of a sine wave guy you're going to run him out there for two weeks at a time while if you're starting Paredes you should be looking for a replacement I want to be very clear about that and then Candelario play hitter who I like I think it's a quality major league hitter it's been extremely tough for him if he gets it going he could be viable right not a 30 home run guy course of the season but a 22 home run guy and a 285 batting average guy and if he can get his way into the top half of the lineup could be viable into the outfield we go Jaron Duran Looks like he's going to be very, very good for Boston. They pushed him to the front of the lineup, so we know every opportunity. He's going to get all the plate appearances. He's running. He's hitting for average. Get with Duran if it's not too late. McCutcheon has been excellent. Also, while he's healthy, um, you can run out McCutcheon. I have Philadelphia up there. Embarrassing. And then Juan Yepes for St. Louis, who's been very good, and they've had injuries as well. While Tyler O'Neill is down, you can expect Yepes to play, and then Bader went down as well. So Yepes, really good. And remember, this is his first go round. As good as he's looked in such a small set, there is like the sky is the limit for Yepes. Over to the other side, which are your deeper league formats, guys like Duran, McCutcheon, Yepes probably owned in tens and twelves. Over to fifteen teams where these guys are available: Gavin Sheets, Cole Calhoun, and Trace Thompson. Sheets playing every day back for Chicago. Calhoun. Who you probably, I hope you dropped after we added him about six weeks ago. Was good for three, bad for three. Here we go again. Cal Calhoun, when he's good, is awesome. Don't be surprised if next week we're talking about how good he's been over the past seven days. And then Trace Thompson, youngster for the Dodgers, is playing every day. Has a homer and a steal in the last seven days. You could do worse than be in that contextual surrounding. Dodgers haven't been great, but of course they're going to pick it up. And then it is just unbelievably difficult as far as pitching goes you can't tell the difference between 10 12 and 15 team uh, free agent list right now i'll just run you through it if any of these guys are available these are the guys you're looking for stripling and josh winder at the top i think it's winder actually sorry so stripping for toronto winder for minnesota twins palante for the cardinals Mitch White for the Dodgers. Probably must owns or probably owned already. Maybe Graham Ashcraft, who goes today. He got beat up a couple starts ago, then went out and gave you eight innings of one run ball. He's not a big strikeout guy, but there's a lot to like in the profile. We'll get to that in a little bit. And Hunter Strickland and Lou Trevino, gold star on the Cork Stats, knows on Friday we were taking a look at the bullpens. I think we'll do the same. We're just digging through the advanced statistical leaderboard. And we came up with Lou Trevino, and he ended up getting the saves this week. And saves are extremely difficult. So even if Danny Jimenez comes back and Trevino gets supplanted, him and Strickland accounted for three, four, or five saves this week. And if you've got five saves this week, you've jumped up the standings. And I think that's what we're going to have to be doing is churning on Fridays, looking 
for anybody that could be helpful, guys that are, you know, big K minus walk, big whiff rates, keeping home runs down, the stuff that we're looking for in bullpens, getting some usage, and then we can go after them. So hopefully that was helpful. Or those are your 10, 12, and 15 team ads. All right, let's do some betting before we get out of here. All righty, daddy do. What is that thing we're doing as far as betting? Well, we're winning. <laughs> I swear. To, it feels almost foreign. And if you notice, I really have not been tweeting. I'm not even trying to tweet emojis right now. Jeez Louise. But hopefully, like we said, you know, the process remains steadfast. I refuse to change it. It is battle-tested. It is battle-hardened. And I won't let a few results throw it off. And now we're seeing it kind of... All at once, right? The totals are hitting. The sides are starting to hit. The total base props are starting to hit. All at once, we hit the parlay yesterday. We went three for four on the round robin the day before. And now you can see, like, the profits are really starting to roll in. And hopefully that'll do it. All right, audio-only listeners, let's get you through it. Three plays on the board. Let's do the total base props first because we already covered the analysis. It was Reese Hoskins and J-Rod, both at better than even money, right? We mentioned J-Rod against Adrian Martinez, and that's, uh, let's see how long he even hangs in the game. Then we're going to get the juicy part of the Athletics bullpen. I think the Mariners just run up the score. That team total is probably viable as well. And then Hoskins, we mentioned against Ian Anderson. Hoskins looking excellent right now, swinging one of the hottest sticks in the league. Expect that price to move to the negative. And the one bet that I have is... Cincinnati F5. I mentioned it, my boy Graham Ashcraft going up against Kyle Hendricks. I believe we have the distinct edge here. Let's take a quick look before we get out of here. Ashcraft, 327 ERA, 109 whip with a 620 OPS allowed every single earned run indicator below 3.75. Sierra, 371. The deserved ERA at 2.88. XFIP, 3.6. Yes, the K rate is low, but so is the walk rate. So if we're ever going to stomach right the low 16% K rate, remember this is not fantasy. This is betting where Ks don't matter. In fact, I'd almost rather... I'd rather... Pitcher pitch to contact, ground balls, ground ball double plays, get in and out when we know he's going to get his 15 outs. That's kind of what I'm looking for. One of the differences, right, we talk about application. I think this is one of the better pitcher applications here, a player like Graham Ashcraft. We mentioned him for fantasy, but that's because everyone's desperate. The lack of strikeouts will hurt you in fantasy, particularly in Roto. We're betting almost who cares. So Ashcraft... Excellent as far as first strike rates. One of the highest in the league, up at 64%. He does not fool around. He gets up. He gets ahead. And then he makes you... He forces you into weak contact, basically. The in-zone contact rate up over 93, but the ground ball rate nearly at 60. The fly ball rate at 23. Hard hit rate at 26. The bow rate at 4. Right, so he is keeping it low. He's keeping it slow. He has a sub-300 ex-woba year to date. His location is is elite, elite, elite. I covered it in detail at The Athletic as a pitcher that I thought could stick along with Jeffrey Springs about seven or eight weeks ago. They've been two of the better young pitchers. And if you've added them, you're, again, you're thanking me. But don't worry, you're very welcome because this is what we do. If you really are thankful, just tag Patty Mayo and tell him how good of a job I'm doing. So Graham Ashcraft, I think we have the distinct edge as far as pitching here. People maybe seeing the name. Kyle Hendricks, 4-9, ERA, 1-3 whip, 800 OPS, Sierra up near 5, PCRA over 5, deserved ERA near 5, his K rate low at 17, but his walk rate over 6, and the swing strike rate the same. The problem here with Hendricks is where he used to be a ground ball machine, he's now giving up a ton of lift. So where we would expect the very high ground ball rate from Hendricks, Hendricks' fly ball rate year-to-date is at 43. You pair that with the 10% barrel is the nearly 1.5 home runs per 9, 375 x Woba on the season. Lefties in particular are killing Hendricks. 929 OPS to lefty, 400 Woba. So that's where 
Cincinnati is going to get it done. That might even make for a nice little mini stack if you want to queue up the Cincinnati lefty. So a guy like Votto is probably viable today, you know, just to give you an idea of how we get there. So give me Cincinnati, F5 money line at plus 105. Reese Hoskins, one and a half bases at plus 105. Julio Rodriguez, plus one and a half bases, um, over one and a half bases at plus 105. Pretty simple here. You give us two out of three, and it's a profitable day. Keep the red pen in the drawer. Break out the black ink, and let's the good times roll, baby. And that will do it from Cork Stats in my second attempt here of putting this show together. Um, yeah, sorry about the bit late, but I think it'll be worth it because you actually get to hear it. Wouldn't be as good if it was me going... Sometimes I think I talk loud enough that maybe I could, you know, get over the mute button. But that's another story for another day. Thank you so much for picking up what we're putting down here. Download the Jock Market app. Use the code MMN and plug in the players that we mentioned. If they're below $5.50 and enjoy the ride. And it's pretty much that simple. And then I'll go one bit further for the players that have now made money and are looking to open up their portfolios, which I've I, I've seen now. I'm really enjoying this, seeing people get away from trying to grind in DFS. I'm not saying don't play DFS. I think there's money to be made in DFS. But for me, it's more of a spike, winner-take-all ceiling thing, where jock market is in every day, where we expect to profit every day in jock market. There is no jackpot. And it's that style of thinking sharp application of being proactive opposed to being reactive and then just letting it fall the way it may and having you know our probabilistic scenarios hopefully play out for us and that's been the case but the last thing i mentioned was backfilling into those cheap players because that is the pathway to success is low priced players where in dfs it's not necessarily the case yes hitting on a low player is good but only because it's should theoretically open up the pathway for a more expensive player. See, in jock market, that's not the case. You don't need that correlative piece. If you smash the cheap play, you don't need the chalk play. In fact, you never almost ever want the chalk play. And again, that's how I turned a $20 promo into nearly 4000 bucks. And hey man, you know, listen, the proof's in the pudding. I got the receipts. You know me for all the smack I talk. You got to be able to back it up. So I think that'll do it. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the Audio Only Pod. The views climbing up. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Press the like button. The views climbing up. The comments climbing up. Oh man, I really do appreciate all all of you, and I think you understand the passion and the dedication that this takes, right? You can't fake this. And it's now the last day of June. We're going at the same speed, with the same intensity, all your love, all your power, every single day, no matter what. Win, lose, draw, sick, well, happy, hot, cold, doesn't matter, never matters. We control the work ethic, we can't control the outcome, so what are we gonna do? Make the process unflappable. Make the process. Make the process. That's got to be what you tell yourself because that is what keeps you going through eventual downturns and keeps you from getting away from the things that work over the long run. All right, that'll do it. That's the last feather in the cap. Bang! Look for me. Today is my debut on PicksWise. I will also have my athletic... Rest of season fantasy rankings coming out, of course. They're really cool. We got you know, a couple hundred people. I capped it at like 550. I think I, I think at 555, I said triple nickel. I'm out. All right, everyone. You know I love you so much, man. I'll check you later on. Hit me up on Twitter. Any time of day, any day of the week. Enjoy the games. Enjoy your day. When we're done with the book, enjoy that pay. And remember, when you work this hard, it feels a lot less like luck, yo. Peace. <laughs>